In this video, we give a brief overview on linear transformations. Remember that a linear transformation is a map from a vector space V to a vector space W that sends each input vector in V to an output vector in W. It also has the following property. If I look at T of some scalar A times a vector X plus a scalar B times a vector Y, then first we can split up the sum and think about it as T of A times X plus T of B times Y. And then we can pull out the scalars out of the transformation and write it as A times T of X plus B times T of Y. An important example of a linear transformation is a matrix transformation. A matrix transformation is a linear transformation where the output is some matrix A times your input vector. Previously, we learned that any linear transformation from Rn to Rm can be thought of as a matrix transformation. As long as we understand what the transformation is doing to the basis vectors in Rn, we can write down the standard matrix for that transformation. What we'll eventually learn is that any linear transformation can be thought of as a matrix transformation, even when your inputs and outputs aren't traditional vectors. For example, we learned about the vector space of polynomials in a previous video, so we can have a linear transformation that sends a polynomial to a different polynomial, and that we'll be able to describe as a matrix transformation. Let's go over some key terms that are relevant to linear transformations. Remember that the domain of a linear transformation is the vector space that your inputs belong to. If your linear transformation is from V to W, then we say that the domain is V. In the case where we have a matrix transformation and A is an M by N matrix, then your domain is R N. The codomain is the vector space that your outputs belong to. In a linear transformation from V to W, W would be your codomain. If you're working with a matrix transformation, and the matrix A is an M by N matrix, then your codomain is RM. Next we have the image or the range of the transformation. This is just a set of all outputs from your transformation. In set notation, this is the collection of all T of X's for every X in V. If you're working with a matrix transformation, this is sometimes referred to as the column space. One thing to remember is that your image or range is always a subset of your codomain. Lastly, we have the kernel. This is the set of input vectors that are mapped to the zero vector in your codomain. In set notation, this is the collection of x's such that t of x is the zero vector. When we're working with matrix transformations, this is referred to as the null space. One thing to note is that your kernel always contains the zero vector, but sometimes it may have more than just a zero vector. Now let's try to understand why the zero vector is always in the kernel. We can look at the explanation that I've written. Let's first consider t of zero. Now this input zero here can be rewritten as zero plus zero. Using the property of a linear transformation that we have up here, we can break this linear transformation apart into t of 0 plus t of 0, which combines to give me 2t of 0. So if one copy of t of 0 is equal to two copies of t of 0, well, the only vector that's equal to twice itself is the 0 vector. So that's why t of the 0 vector gives me the 0 vector. And since the zero vector in V is mapped to the zero vector in W, we have that the zero vector in V is in the kernel. Next, we'll revisit what it means for a linear transformation to be one to one and onto. We say that a linear transformation T from V to W is one to one or injective if for any pair of distinct input vectors X and Y, I have that their outputs T of X and t of y are not equal to each other. Another way to think about this is that every input gets sent to a different output. When we were working with a matrix transformation, we checked that a transformation was one-to-one -one or injective if we row reduced the matrix and saw that every column was a pivot column. Another way we can think about this is as follows. 
a linear transformation is one-to-one -one if and only if the kernel of t contains only the zero vector of v. Let's try to understand why. If t is one-to-one, -one, then I know that every input gets sent to a different output. From our last page, we know that the zero vector in v gets sent to the zero vector in w. And since t is one-to-one, -one, it's the only input that's going to be mapped to the zero vector in w. Therefore, the kernel only contains the zero vector in v. On the other hand, if t is not one-to-one, -one, then I can find a distinct pair of input vectors x and y such that their outputs are the same, meaning t of x is equal to t of y. Then notice that t of x minus y can be broken apart into t of x minus t of y. Again, this is using the property of a linear transformation. But since t of x is equal to t of y, this difference is the zero vector. This tells me that the vector x minus y is also in the kernel, which tells me that the kernel has more than just the zero vector. This allows me to conclude that a linear transformation is one to one if and only if the kernel only contains the zero vector. So let's talk about onto or surjective. We say that a linear transformation t from v to w is onto or surjective if for every vector y in your codomain, there exists an input vector x in your domain such that t of x equals y. So this means that everything in your codomain has some input vector mapping to it. For matrix transformations, to determine if the transformation was onto or surjective, we row reduced A. In the row echelon form of A, if every row had a non-zero entry, then we would say that the transformation is onto. If it had a row of zeros at the bottom, then we would say that the transformation was not onto. In general, we know that the image of a transformation is a subset of the codomain. But if the transformation is onto or surjective, then these two quantities are equal. The image of the transformation is equal to the codomain. So that's it for this video. In our next videos, we'll look more in depth into the kernel and the image for a matrix transformation.